Although narcissists love to complicate things, they themselves aren't very complicated. In fact, it's really quite simple. Narcissistic people are about manipulation, domination, power, and control, period. That's it. It all boils down to just that. And that is precisely why there are some very specific personality types that they absolutely cannot abide. And that's exactly what I'm unpacking today. Seven people narcissists secretly loathe and fear. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Let's get into it. Seven personality types that the destructive narcissist secretly fears. First up is the empowered empath. Narcissists find it incredibly challenging to deal with empathetic people who are also empowered. People who are genuinely compassionate, loving, kind, and caring, as well as being fully awake, aware, tuned in, and therefore not so easy to manipulate, dominate, dupe, deceive, or control. The thing is, if you're an empath, your loving nature exposes the narcissist's lack of empathy and emotional depth, their lack of emotional intelligence, and your ability to genuinely care for others threatens their facade of superiority and self-importance. And the thing is, empaths often try to see the good in everyone, and without even realizing it, may be projecting the good that they carry onto people who do not carry the same good, which can make them a very good target for, among other things, manipulation. Now, if you're an empowered empath who has some real healing and recovery under your belt, in particular from codependency and any family of origin wounding and trauma you may have suffered, the narcissist in your life aren't going to like that about you very much. Why? Well, because this means they aren't going to be able to exploit you and your kindness so easily. So instead, they'll work to undermine your self-worth. And when that fails, they'll go after your reputation and your relationship with others, smearing and vilifying you behind your back. That's the name of the game when we're dealing with people with a destructive narcissist personality pattern. However, regardless of what games the narcissist plays, it's vital that you remember your empathetic nature is a beautiful gift. Once you've healed your codependency issues, you'll soon realize it's actually your superpower. Do not ever let anyone diminish the light that you carry. Our world needs you, all lit up and shining bright, now more than ever. Next, let's talk about independent spirits. When you're a strong, independent person who knows your worth, and can stand on your own two feet, the narcissist may very well despise you for it. Not just resent you, despise you. Your self-reliance threatens their need for admiration and control. It also makes it far less likely that they'll be able to dominate you without experience some real pushback or consequences. And they don't like that. Narcissists crave power and dominance in their relationships, and a strong, independent spirit like yours can make them feel inadequate. That's when they'll try to belittle you and your achievements, and try to get you to doubt your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. Whatever you do, it's important that you stay true to yourself, maintain your independence, and again, never ever let anyone attempt to dim your shine, your brilliance. As Marianne Williamson is famous for saying, there is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. That goes for narcissists as well. Next on the list of people narcissists secretly loathe and fear is the high achiever. That's right, the successful, goal-oriented, accomplished individual who has their proverbial bleep together. This person is, interestingly enough, simultaneously both attractive and repellent to a destructive narcissist. And here's why. A narcissist is someone who has a strong desire for social status and recognition. But they want that social status and recognition without having to put in any actual work or effort to merit and deserve it. 
So they like to align themselves with people they feel will benefit them and augment their status by osmosis, while also being envious and jealous of the genuine success and status a successful person has legitimately earned. Whatever the high achiever has managed to create, acquire, or experience will absolutely inspire envy and jealousy in the narcissist. Moreover, the narcissist will feel entitled to benefit from the hard work and accomplishments of the high achiever, often claiming the other's accomplishments as their own, again, without having to put in any real work or effort. And this bizarre sense of entitlement will include expecting unfettered access to others' belongings, resources, and social connections. Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you can relate to any of this. Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in one of my coaching programs, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Next on the list of people narcissists loathe and fear is the authentic truth teller. That's right. The authentic truth teller is another personality the narcissist cannot stand. If you are someone who values honesty, transparency, and open lines of communication, you're going to be seen as a threat to a narcissist's false persona and web of lies. You're not likely going to be willing to enable them in their manipulation and deception, which of course will make you very dangerous for the narcissist. Narcissists often use manipulation and deceit to maintain their false self-image and cover up the relationship crimes they've committed. When you bring truth and authenticity into the equation, they're going to feel uneasy and become uncomfortable because your penchant for truth and authenticity will, again, threaten to expose their false persona, their lies, and manipulative ploys for exactly what they are. And nothing terrifies a narcissist more than the threat of exposure. Remember, speaking your truth is a powerful way to heal, grow, and set yourself free. But a word of warning, be smart. Never put yourself or anyone else in unnecessary danger by doing so. Next on the list is the self-assured, confident person who knows who they are. Genuine confidence is a trait narcissists envy, but cannot handle when confronted with it in others, which is why they so often surround themselves with a tribe of enabling little minions, weak, insecure people who are too insecure and afraid to stand up to them. Narcissists like yes men and yes women. So if you're secure in yourself, and your abilities, a destructive narcissist is going to feel overshadowed by you and your genuine self-confidence. And again, they don't like that. The thing is, narcissists thrive on being the center of attention and the most significant person in the room. When you exude real self-assurance, in their view, it takes away from their spotlight. Therefore, they may attempt to diminish your confidence by either belittling you, lying about you, or gaslighting you directly. Always remember your worth and never ever let anyone get away with attempting to diminish you or your self-confidence. Next is the discerner. The person who has the ability to exercise wise discernment is not an easy target for a destructive narcissist. They're not easy to manipulate, dupe, or deceive. In other words, where the narcissist is concerned, the person with wise discernment is going to be onto them and quickly. And as I said earlier, a narcissist's greatest fear is the threat of exposure. So anyone who can see through them, see through their nonsense, see it for what it is, and isn't willing to enable it, is going to be on the receiving end of some serious hate, whether that be direct and overt or passive and covert. Either way, it's coming. And this, of course, includes people who have healed from codependency and narcissistic abuse, because once healed, once empowered, you become much more able to quickly discern who's who and what's what. 
and therefore you become a real threat to the narcissist since you're not likely to be willing to participate in all of their dysfunction and maladaptive ways of showing up in the relationship. Again, they don't like that. And last, but certainly not least on the list of people narcissists secretly fear is the boundary setter. To say that narcissists dislike and secretly fear people who actually have the ability to establish clear boundaries and more importantly, aren't afraid to enforce them would be a colossal understatement. Why? Well, because boundaries limit the narcissist's ability to have their way with you. Meaning they limit the narcissist's ability to manipulate, dominate, and control you. They limit the narcissist's ability to exploit you. When you set and maintain healthy limits and boundaries, it will without question threaten to expose the narcissist's inappropriate behavior and shocking sense of entitlement. So when that happens, they'll do one of two things. Either they will retreat and covertly smear and vilify you to anyone who will listen, or at the very least, their enabling little entourage, or they'll push back with attempts to breach your boundaries in order to maintain a sense of power, dominance, and control over you, the environment, and the generally accepted narrative. And the truth is, sometimes they'll do both. Again, narcissists don't like boundaries. So when this happens, what you want to do is stand firm, hold your ground while also prioritizing your well-being. And you do this by protecting yourself and your boundaries consistently over time. And whatever you do, do not waver. Not only will you lose all credibility if you do, but it will only make it so much harder for you to maintain healthy limits and boundaries with the narcissist moving forward. Remember, you teach people how to treat you by holding the standard in your own life, by standing firm and standing your ground when necessary, and respecting yourself and your personal limits and boundaries. Honoring you first and honoring you more that's your job, no one else's. And as for the narcissist, well, they'll eventually have to go elsewhere to find a source of narcissistic supply. And when they do, you'll be left in peace, which of course is a very good thing. Now that we've covered the personalities narcissists don't like, let's shift our focus to some healing and recovery tips for those of you who are still struggling with narcissistic abuse. Here are seven of my favorite recommendations that will help you navigate your way to a better place within yourself so you can break free from the abuse permanently. Number one, self-reflection. Take time to reflect on your experiences and your feelings your emotions. Be willing to stand still long enough to get in touch with what's going on inside of you and be willing to tell yourself the dirt honest truth about what you see, what you feel, and what you hear. Understandably, this can be difficult if you're suffering from PTSD or worse yet, CPTSD as a result of long-term exposure to empathy impaired emotional manipulators. But Believe me when I tell you, this is a good place to start. Carve out time to get still and reflect every day. Journaling what you feel and the truth of your experience daily can be a powerful tool to help you process your feelings and gain the clarity you need to, to find your way out of the pain and confusion. Number two, seek support. At the very least, reach out to trusted friends, safe family members, and or a qualified therapist or coach who actually specializes in these issues. You need people around you who get it. People who can provide emotional support and some real guidance during your healing journey. Number three is self-care. It is vital that you begin to prioritize self-care one way or another. Start with simple practices that nurture your mind, body, and soul daily. Now this can include things like meditation, getting outside in the sun and breathing fresh air, daily exercise, healthy eating, soaking in a salt bath, and spending time doing things you love with people who are good for you. Number four, education. Invest time in educating yourself about the destructive narcissist personality pattern, family of origin dysfunction, codependency recovery, and the dynamics of narcissistic abuse. 
Knowledge is empowering. Now, although it's not enough to actually heal, we don't heal in our heads. It takes more than that. But knowledge can help you make sense of your experiences and move you in the direction to a real healing and recovery journey that actually changes the entire game for you, the entire trajectory of your life for the better. Number five, establish boundaries. Learn how to set and maintain healthy boundaries in all of your relationships, not just with the destructive narcissist in your life. Remember, boundaries are a form of self-love and self-care. You're allowed to have limits and to set boundaries, but you have to learn how to set and maintain them. Again, no one else is going to do this for you. Number six, forgive yourself. Healing from narcissistic abuse is a process. So please be gentle, kind, and loving with yourself. Practice self-compassion. It's okay to have setbacks. What matters is your ongoing commitment to your healing and recovery journey over time. And number seven, be willing to do the work necessary to reconnect with your authentic self and rebuild your confidence. Surround yourself with people who uplift and support you, people who love you, people who are actually on your team and have your back. You deserve at least that and so much more. It's time now. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, how can Tammy M Coaching help you? Well, four ways. Number one, subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to make sure you get my new video every Friday. Number two, watch my free web class by clicking on the link in the description below. You'll learn about my personal journey and professional experience through decades of research specific to healing and recovery from codependency and narcissistic abuse. You'll also learn about some powerful strategies that you can begin to use today. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, and you'd like to be supported by a stellar community of like-minded people who are focused on solutions that actually work, you can learn more about my eight week transformational coaching program, the freedom class by going to TammyMCoaching.com and clicking on programs and reviews for all the details. And number four, if you want some help right now, because you have a burning desire, a burning issue, something seriously painful going on and you need something solved, you want to break free from painful relationship patterns permanently and actually make lasting progress in your healing and recovery, go to TammyMCoaching.com and click on apply now to learn how you can become a client.